What is this place? Hello? Whoa! Fire Whoa! Wizards in the Woods is the placeholder name for the game I've been working on for the past few months along with my friend Golden Disguise. This game is the culmination of both of our passions mashed together into one game. A game we hope to eventually turn into our very first Steam release. We've been working really hard on this game for a while now, and I'm excited to finally start making Deflogs cover it. So, what exactly is this game, and how did it come to be? Well, November of last year, I was totally bogged down with college. I hadn't worked on a game for a while, so I decided to try and find a game jam to do with Golden Disguise. However, we couldn't find any good game jams happening at the time. But instead of just giving up, we decided to effectively pretend like a game jam was going on, and give ourselves a week to make a game prototype. Now, this wasn't the first time we had done this. Earlier that same year, we'd actually done the same thing. We even had our friends come up with fake game jam themes. Anyway, that game that we made uh, earlier in the year was called Big Boss, and it actually has some important similarities to this game. You see, we decided we wanted to make Big Boss have a sort of 2.5D style. It was primarily 3D, but with 2D sprites for the characters that Golden Disguise would make, and the 2D sprites would be pointed at the camera using billboards. We actually really liked this style, and we liked it so much that we decided we wanted to try it again for this latest prototype in November. But what exactly was the game idea? Well, I really wanted to make a proximity chat game, which was a deranged idea for a prototype that was meant to be finished in a week, but I wanted to do it anyway. So I suggested it to Golden Disguise, and instead of telling me how insane I was, Golden Disguise said yes and whispers. And that's how the basic game was born. Now, we did have a lot of ideas immediately about what kinds of things we wanted to do with this game, but since we only gave ourselves a week to do it, we set our goal at just making a game with wizards and proximity chat. So I got to work right away, and surprisingly, I was actually able to get proximity chat working. I made my own proximity chat system using fish networking, an audio plugin called Caress, and RN Noise for noise suppression. And in the end, it actually kind of works. And I didn't just buy someone else's proximity chat solution, I actually made my own. Needless to say, I was, and still am, very proud of that. So, with the proximity chat in, it was time to add the wizards. In the end, Golden Disguise designed three different wizard orders for the game. The plan was to make each order effectively a different subclass of wizard, with their own different list of spells they could learn. However, since we didn't really have time to add spells or anything, at this point in development, they were just an aesthetic difference. So, after adding them in, along with some simple models and a bit of post-processing, the game looked like this. Pretty snazzy, huh? Now, of course, at this point, there wasn't really a game here. The most you could do was play hide-and-seek, which was fun, but far from our idea of what the game could become. What we wanted was to make a game where you and some friends would adventure as a group of wizards in the woods. Your goal would be to deliver a magic orb to save the world from this evil fey god, which would be controlled by an enemy player. The gameplay would be a balance of navigating and uh, collecting materials in order to cast spells to protect yourself from monsters during the night, while the evil god would be effectively playing an RTS as they try to find, manipulate, and kill the players. Now, we were very excited about this idea, but it was very large, and I was very tired from school, so instead of working on the game during winter break, we just brainstormed more ideas for the game. One really influential idea for the game that we came up with during that time was that spellcasting would involve not just different items that you would need in order to cast a spell, but also things like drawing a symbol or saying a magic phrase in order to activate the spell. We were so excited by the ideas that we were coming up with that we decided in 2025 we were going to start working on the game in order to have an actual playable game version done by my birthday in February. So after I finished my video on The Hiding Place, we got to work. Our first priority was getting spellcasting in the game. So I got started working on the spell component system. This system is similar to the way casting spells works in D&D where there are different requirements for casting a spell, like verbal, somatic, or material components. If you can't tell, this game is definitely inspired off of D&D. The first components we added were material and somatic. Material components were simple, just check for the correct items in the player's inventory. But somatic components were more complex. 
In D&D, somatic components refer to gestures made by the character's hands. However, we couldn't really think of a way to translate that into the game, so we decided to make somatic components be a sequence of directions, like a sequence of inputs in DDR. An example would be up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, right? That would be a sequence that you would have to input. Interesting thing about this, we decided to make it so that while you were doing this, your character is still moving based on the directions you press. So effectively, instead of adding a somatic component, we effectively added a dance component. And this was surprisingly fun. The first spell we added with this was Fireball, and it was actually pretty satisfying to execute. Fireball was especially fun because you could also rocket jump with it, which provided some surprisingly great movement tech. However, my birthday was rapidly approaching, and we had only really added the one spell, so with not much time left, and with a fun, mostly combat-related spell in the game, we decided that for the playtest, we were just going to make a more combat-focused version of the game, since that was basically all that was in the game at that point. So, we finished adding some more spells, like Magic Missile and a Healing Spell. We also decided at this point to just ditch the material components for the playtest, as we didn't want people to have to search around for items just to cast a basic spell. Then I added the framework for a simple competitive game mode. The game would be team-based, which would be decided by picking one of the three wizard orders. As mentioned before, the orders are meant to act more like subclasses in the full game, but for this simple combat playtest, we just made them distinguish the teams. Then, the magic orb would spawn in the center, and the teams would clamor to grab it and bring it to the active ritual circle. Hold the orb on the ritual circle for 5 seconds, and score a point for your team. Whoever has the most points when time runs out, wins. It was a very simple game mode, but there was a surprising amount of work to be done. We first needed to add all the logic for picking up the orb, which was a bit difficult since we wanted to make it so the player could throw the orb at other players which meant modifying the inventory system to be capable of handling that. Then we need to add the ritual circles and all of the logic for handling death, respawning, winning, etc. But after a few weeks of work, we managed to finish it all just in time. And when the playtest rolled around, I think everyone had a really fun time playing it. There was surprisingly not that many bugs, and most of the people liked the DDR way of casting spells, since it added an element of skill to casting spells fast. However, some people rightfully criticized the fact that some spells were rather weak, and the DDR system required you to stand still, which was not great for this effectively fast-paced combat game. However, that's where the issue lied. We weren't intending this game to ultimately be a fast-paced combat game. Not even close. The game we wanted to make was slow-paced, methodical, and cooperative, not fast, chaotic, and competitive. This was just meant to be a fun playtest version, not representative of where we actually wanted to take the game. So honestly, to the extent people actually liked this version, it left us in kind of a weird place. Should we expand this version that some people like, or work on our original vision? In the end, we've decided to stick with our original vision. The competitive playtest version of the game was really only created because that was the most fun version of the game we could make by my birthday. It was not at all the type of game the features were even really designed for, and we still had so many more ideas for the game that wouldn't work for a competitive version. So unfortunately, there wasn't much to glean from the playtest, since the playtest version was so fundamentally different from the version we are working on now. However, that doesn't mean there was nothing to take away from the playtest. In my opinion, the main thing to take away was that the mechanics we had in the game so far were pretty fun, and to the extent they weren't, it was at least partly because they conflicted with the idea of a fast-paced competitive game. So, with those takeaways, we worked a bit more on the game, finishing the spellcasting system over the course of the rest of the semester. First, we added Ignis verbal or. components, using a speech recognition AI called Whisper, which was actually made by OpenAI and is actually open source. I know, I'm as surprised as you are. An actual open source thing OpenAI has made? Actually unheard of? Impossible? Implementing it in the game was a bit of a challenge, but luckily somebody made a whisper wrapper for Unity that I was able to use to add it relatively pain-free. 
However, there were a few problems I ran into along the way, including an infinite loop that was partly my fault by ironically turning looping off on a script, as well as a place the wrapper could crash and a feature that I had to disable in order to make it run without lagging my whole game. Okay, so I guess it was a bit painful, but it would have been more painful if I had to make the wrapper myself. And now I'm adding symbolic components. This has been super fun to add, as I wanted to try and come up with my own algorithm for detecting symbols without using AI. And I actually came up with one, which I later figured out is an algorithm that already exists, but whatever. And it was doing a pretty good job though it was pretty laggy, so I've been spending some time trying to optimize it. Along the way, I found other algorithms that are a bit faster, and I'm currently looking into using one of them instead. So it's still a work in progress right now. So yeah, that's where the game is right now. There is still a lot to be done to complete our vision, but I plan on setting aside a lot more time going forward to work on the game, since, as mentioned before, Gold Disguise and I plan on turning this into our first Steam game. We don't have a Steam page up now, but as soon as we do, I'll let you know in one of these devlogs. And that's the other thing. I want to try and make semi-consistent devlogs over the course of this game's development. They probably won't be very similar to this video. They'll probably be less edited, but with more detail on what I'm actually working on, and probably more footage of the actual development of the game. So if that sounds like something you would like to see, please consider subscribing. Obviously, when the Steam page is up, the best way to support the game will be to click the all-important wishlist button. But until then, clicking that subscribe button is the next best thing. Anyway, that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Bye!